I'm sort of interested in, in exploring that um, uh, the differences within being an artist and, and an architect. You know, if I uh, come up with a, a new way of painting or a new way of working with installation, it's not going to have a massive effect. Whereas if an architect uh, develops a new way of building uh, and that gets appropriated into the construction industry, then that can have a huge effect globally. Uh, thinking about my work related to the the shopping mall and uh, all these these type of things as well, which which have both negative and positive consequences. Architects that I'm kind of most interested in over the last few years are people like um, Eileen Gray, uh, who is um, an Irish ar architect and designer, um, and. She designed a, a house in the south of France called E1027, which was um, very influential uh, on a global scale, but was kind of a, in a way appropriated by Le Corbusier, who's another inspiration for me. Um, and then uh, Frank Lloyd Wright has been very important. Um, I've done a lot of paintings of, of his work, but also been very inspired by um, his ideas around organic architecture and also how he talks a lot about his inspiration from his childhood. Like um, he uh, was educated as, uh, in the original kindergarten, uh, Froebel kindergarten. And then an art the architect, another architect I'm interested in is um, this one, Philip Johnson. So this is uh, Philip Johnson's glass house. Um, and I, this painting was done in 2010 uh, from a, an image um, uh, or a cropped image of, of one of the, uh, Johnson's buildings. But I recently, in the last couple of years, visited the glass house and have started making um, paintings based on the photographs I, I took at the glass house as well. Um, and then this is uh, a painting uh, of a building uh, not so far from the glass house in Massachusetts, uh, uh, sorry, in Connecticut, Connecticut. and uh, this one's in Massachusetts, it's um, uh, Walter Gropius' um, house he built for himself, and Walter Gropius was an em emigre architect who moved to America uh, uh, just before the Second World War, but he was the founder of the Bauhaus and um, he also designed all the, the buildings including the Bauhaus uh, school itself and the, what were called the Meisterhauser which is where the houses that um, uh, the professors lived in and had their studios. Uh, people like Mies van der Rohe who's another huge influence uh, or inspiration uh, architect whose work I've painted um, a lot of uh, uh, paintings from and then um, also uh, Lina, Lina Bobardi who is a, uh, was a Brazilian architect. I found her uh, architecture really inspiring and then um, a lot of uh, other emigre art architects like Richard Neutra uh, who was working a lot in, in California, mid-century modern designs in California and other places in America and then uh, R.M. Schindler um, and Charles and Ray Eames have been a big influence as well, both the Eames House and Studio but also their design projects. And Charles Eames also was educated in the Froebel kindergarten uh, techniques. The space we're in right now is the old packing room, so the plants would have been uh, brought into the space and then packed up and, and shipped out and uh, strangely this uh, studio space is uh, incredibly adaptable uh, for artistic purposes in that um, it's uh, got loading bays at the front and uh, it means that I can get big installation works and crates in and out or big paintings in and out and what I've done in this particular studio is that there used to be a, a semi-derelict flat roof here and I've removed it um, 
and increased the, the height of the space so that I can work on my large uh, tree drawings here. Uh, but it also gives me an opportunity to make uh, animations and I'm hoping to make some uh, stop motion animations uh, of uh, sculptural uh, objects as well as paintings in the space. Um, and I, I've been using, when the greenhouses existed, I was kind of using them as, as spaces of contemplation, but also documenting the, the ch their change where uh, you know, trees are taking over, plants are taking over, the architecture is beginning to disintegrate. Um, and now that the greenhouses are gone, I don't have them as a kind of a, a space of contemplation. I'm able to kind of walk in the spaces where they once stood. But I'm um, looking forward to uh, exploring those spaces again through the archive of images that I've taken. So that also means that the, uh, those spaces or the ghosts of those spaces can kind of influence the way I approach the paintings that I make, uh, but also the installations that I make. Um, and the, these, uh, these studio spaces have affected the way I make, uh, the, how I work with scale of the paintings. So generally when I'm working on small scale, I work in the house, either at the kitchen table or in my office. And then when I'm working on larger scale, uh, it tends to be mostly during the summer months, spring, summer months, and into the autumn, but in winter, there's less activity over in the studios just because they're, they're not heated studios. And it affects the scale, it affects the uh, possibilities with <clears throat> working on bigger scale installation. So uh, the space uh, I'm able to work on, uh, the wooden objects uh, on a big scale, but also work with these large scale uh, root uh, uh, works, which I can use in drawings, but also uh, in a sculptural installation. Um, so there's a whole range of, of ways that the actual architecture affects the space, but it also, uh, the versatility of the different spaces allows me to adapt them. So if I need a wall, I build a wall. If I need uh, an outdoor space within which to work, um, I can Set, set that up uh, and uh, store larger scale materials like the trees and uh, larger pieces of wood in outdoor sheds and so on. So it's, it's a constant um, negotiation with the architecture, negotiation with the spaces. In terms of using then the, the, the music in, in the works, I, I find that of course they do have an effect on me while I'm painting, so if I'm listening to a kind of frenetic, uh, energetic track, then it definitely means that I maybe um, uh, have a, a different sort of energy uh, when, I'm, when I'm painting and often when it's, it's very cold in the winter and I'm trying to sort of get myself uh, geared up to, to make a large scale painting, then uh, music helps in that way. But it also kind of creates an abstract um, space for, for contemplation that I, I really find uh, uh, interesting in, in terms of uh, an interplay between you know, the process of creating something and the process of engaging with something uh, with an artwork, a piece of music.